We humans are having a serious impact on our natural environment. The southern resident orcas around Vancouver are one species in crisis. They've not had a successful birth in years. Our next guest has wondered about the impact of noise in the maritime environment. She is exploring ways that we might improve the lives of our marine neighbors. Please welcome Jen Vladichuk. Those are the beautiful calls of our southern resident killer whales. You might have heard about them on the news recently. There are only 74 remaining in the wild and only about 38 that are reproductively active. And they have had no surviving births in the last three years. There have been three key threats to their recovery and survival that have been identified. And there are pollution and contaminants, prey or food availability, and vessel disturbance, including associated noise. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about noise, specifically underwater noise. I'm part of a large team of scientists that are working to address this issue. Southern resident killer whales are highly social animals. They live with their mothers their entire lives. And they use sounds to communicate between them and also for echolocation to find their food. Echolocation is when an animal emits a high frequency click and use the reflecting echoes to essentially acoustically map their environment and also to find food. And these animals require a lot of food. On average, a killer whale needs 11 adult Chinook per day. And for those of you that fish, you will know that 11 large Chinook a day is not an easy task. So these animals use both passive listening to sounds that their prey make and also use echolocation to track them. We humans also make a lot of sound underwater. So when we see a ship like this, we don't tend to think of the sounds that they produce because in air, they actually don't produce much. But underwater, as you just heard, they make a lot of sound. And this noise radiates away from the vessel and can reach up to 20 kilometers or more. And this sound can interfere with the sound that the marine mammals use. And this is what we call masking. So you heard the killer whales calling before. Well, this next sound clip shows the whales calling with also a tanker passing by. So this is a map of the Salish Sea. It includes Georgia Strait between Vancouver and Vancouver Island, and Juan de Fuca Strait between southern Vancouver Island and Washington State. And in the map here, you'll see all these fireflies. Well, those represent boats. And the light is the noise emitted by these boats. So this is a typical day in the summer in the Salish Sea. And this is just representing primarily commercial traffic or boats that have AIS tracking on board. So the Sailor Sea is a busy and noisy place. But there are great initiatives that are happening locally. For example, the Port of Vancouver's ECHO program, which stands for Enhancing Cetacean Habitat and Observation, have done great things. And they are working with local companies to, under, to better understand the noise from ships. For example, last summer and this summer, they have commissioned the slowdown trial, which has also been on the news quite a bit. But what we did was look at the sound levels from ships on the shipping route, which is also through the critical habitat of the southern resident killer whales. So we had two recording sites, one in Harrow Strait between San Juan Island and Victoria, where we asked vessels to slow down to 11 knots from their typical 15 to 20. 
And we also had another measuring station in Georgia Strait. We measured the, vo the boats doing their typical operational speed. We, we measured over 8,000 measurements or boat passes on these recorders. And we can compare the sound levels and they were significant. There were huge reductions when the vessels were going slower. And I encourage you to check out the full report on the Port of Vancouver website. Another collaborative project that is happening locally is between Ocean Networks Canada, which is an initiative of the University of Victoria. And they were working with JASCO Applied Sciences, the company I work for, as well as the federal government to include more underwater listening stations throughout the Salish Sea. So we can monitor the sound levels of vessels in real time and also automatically detect for marine mammal, marine mammal presence. And from that, we can automatically alert ships of the whale's presence so they can slow down and deviate their course if necessary. So what can you do? If you have a boat, I recommend you follow the Be Whale Wise viewing guidelines found on their website. And they recommend that you go with less than seven knots within 400 meters of any marine life. And to stay farther than 200 meters around killer whales and 100 meters around other wildlife. And turn off your depth sounders. A recent study has shown that the main frequency of depth sounders is also the main frequency of the killer whales. So it has huge potential to interfere. So although this might be a somewhat invisible problem, it is a known problem. And there are a lot of collaborators working to address this issue, these and other organizations. There's even an international problem with the governor of Washington state putting forward a call to action to also minimize their impacts on, this, on the southern resident killer whales. And I've worked on projects from New York state to almost the North Pole on monitoring sound levels from industrial sources and trying to monitor and mitigate their effects on marine life. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good evening. <laughs>